real life street stars. We here with Street Lord Rook. What it is, boy? What it do, Street Lord Rook? Now, for everybody who ain't knowing, we got a real legend in the building. But we gonna give them the history, man. For everybody, deaf, dumb, stupid, living up under a rock, man. Tell them where you from. Detroit. And you know, just give us a brief history, a brief synopsis of who you are and, and, and your little background. Uh, I'm Street Lord Rook, you know, Detroit, West Side, you know, um, we did it kind of big in Detroit um, on the rap scene, you know what I'm saying? We, um, it's an understatement, ain't it? <laughs> <laughs> I mean, we did songs with everybody, Baby, Juvie, uh, BG, uh, Capone, Nori, Benny Siegel, Shine, uh, Freeway, yeah, I'm sure E-40, Be Legit. DBJ, uh, Carl Thomas. Man, that's that's a lot of hard hitter names you just threw out there, man. But but let let's let's set the picture, man. I want you to set the picture, cause you know me just doing my research on you know what I'm saying. Like y'all name ring bells. Y'all got documentary YouTube documentaries on y'all. You know that. So it's it's a little different with y'all for real. So um, I want you to set the scene. Like what year are we talking about when you jumped out there and you was you start rapping, you start building your the, the, your connection with the people um, that you started doing your stuff with Street Look. Yeah, I started rapping back in like 96, like. Right. How, 95, how? 96, like I was still in high school when we first started making okay. records. So 95, 96, all right. Yeah, so uh, my cousin started rapping and cousin started a group called Street Lord. Yeah. And uh, you know, they was rapping. I'm like, if they could do it, I could do it. You know, I'm kind of competitive, so. Type shit, yeah. This competitive spirit, and um, I think, Everyone in the group was competitive, so right. it was like a battle for who getting your verse on the record. You know what I'm saying? It was like a competition. Yeah, so it keep it kept everybody sharp. You know, it just worked. So when we talking '95, '96, we talking like one of the golden eras of hip hop. You know what I'm saying? We had you know Big Pac, Nah, like we had a yeah. lot of spitters. You know what I'm saying? And from the Det Detroit scene, you know, from from my vantage point, I've always heard it to be a lot of lyrical. People, you know, saying like I was an Eminem fan growing up, so they would always talk about, you know, the the eight miles and the the rap yeah. battles and the shit that they did. How would you paint your time in Detroit when you were in there? Did you get into any of that, the rap battling and all of that other shit? No, but like Royce the Five Nine, like that's my guy. You know what I'm saying? Me and Royce go way back. Like I remember me, Royce, and my man Blade. We'd be piled up in the car together, broke as a motherfucker. Like before we was getting money. Royce was my man, you know what I'm saying? Right. So we go way back, man. He always been like a lyrical, super dope rapper, you know what I'm saying? But that wasn't our thing, you know what I'm saying? We was we was the street rappers. Like street. we rapping about getting money, selling work. You know what I'm yeah. saying? We really selling really work. <laughs> so um, you know, I was like I said, I was digging through some um some docs and um I I seen a guy say, man, growing up. You know, niggas wanted to be street lords. Like, that was the thing. You know what I'm saying? Or that might have been my boy Big D's interview. One, one of the two. Shout out to Big D. You know what I'm saying? Um, but basically making it sound like like y'all were notorious in the city. Like, y'all really held it down for Detroit in general. You know what I mean? So talk about that. That's uh, actual and factual. You know what I'm saying? Like, when if you go to Detroit and ask about who run Detroit or who was the guys in Detroit, Everybody gonna say the street lords. Like it ain't no if, ands, or buts. Like Eminem might be known, or Big Shine might be known as the popular Detroit rapper. Right. But Big Shine will tell you he grew up on the street lords and Blade Ice Road. Right. Like, and there's no knock on Eminem because I just seen something on there where Royce and Ice Road Vezo talking about Detroit was as the street lords were like who they grew up on. Real you know, shit. I think Eminem done a lot for. Detroit hip hop, but right. the street hip hop. Right, right, right. You ain't gonna find nobody to say they ain't grew up on the street lords. You know what I'm saying? Every rapper that's popping right now has been influenced by the street lords in some form or fashion. And I ain't gonna say we was all no super duper lyrical rappers, but what we was rapping about, we was living it. So it made it that more intangible. Like, oh, they talking about getting money. They really getting money. They really got bands. They really got vests. They really got their own two, three hundred thousand dollars worth of jewelry. And they young. Right. Like, 
So it's it's real. Yeah. That's crazy, man. Um, like I say, just <clears throat> You know, for those who don't know, you can get into the story. Just look them up, street. You know, street lords. You know, um, can you can you name who was a, like the main founders of the street lords and how it all came all together? Right. Uh, my cousin Yah was one of the prominent figures. He started the street lords. He ain't do no rapping or nothing, but he. Right. My cousin, oh, he rapped with her. Street Lord One, Blade Icewood, G Rock, uh, Vito, myself. Um, KDZ, you know, like as as you growing and you catching that buzz, there'll be a lot of people coming around and with the entourage. Cause we we really was just some drug dealers getting a whole bunch of money that started rapping. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, right. <laughs> now, how hard was it to create that scene um, in Detroit? Because when you think about a place like Detroit, it's very rough. It's very uh, impoverished. And everybody's trying to get some money and get out and, and make a way. How was y'all able to create that scene and blow up in the music out there like that? Shit, grand. You know, like Detroit is silly for the hustler. So it's like when you hustling, like we in the at the time when we was doing, we probably wasn't thinking like we marketing for the music. But if we go in the club and we blow thirty, forty thousand. We marketing, because everybody now like, who the fuck is them? You know what I'm saying? We weren't looking at it like we was marketing. Before all of this make it rain came popping, we had a song called Turn Them Into Roaches, where we throw money and watch all the girls get on the floor <laughs> like roaches. So it was hard. Turn oh, Them Into Roaches shit. back then. Like we were, That's some wild shit. So that was long before making it rain. We thought the song was called Throw Something, Turn Them All Into Roaches. Crack the quiz, watch the bosses do the toast. Yeah. So, I mean, we... We've been doing like wild stuff for a long time. Like it's it's been going down. Now I want you to keep it real. You know, everybody that raps at some point be feeling like, man, nigga, like especially when you underground, man, that nigga took my shit, man. Hold on, that's our that's our slang. Hold on, man, wait a minute. You know, especially Dallas, nigga. Oh no, nah, man, we started that. Whoop de whoop. Did y'all ever feel like the mainstream just straight took some of y'all shit and didn't really reciprocate where they got it from? You know. I mean, now you probably going to, the Cartier thing, like everybody, everybody come up with the Cartier thing, man, Cartier thing, but I, Oh, y'all started that? <laughs> oh, shit. Yeah, Niggas just took that from like you. Like my man, Blade Icewood, he was talking about the diamonds and the Cartiers way back then. So, yep. was like, people today, uh, I've been getting people be DMing me, like, Master P started it, or this person started it, but it's like. But nobody was fucking We made it popular. Like, if you, if you go around now, motherfucker be like, Oh, you got on some cars, be like, oh, you from Detroit? You got on some cars, you know what I'm saying? It's like, that's a staple that everybody claim to now. Yeah, that's crazy, man. Now, um, there, like you said, there's a there's a figure again, just doing the doc search, you know, um, uh, Blade, I think his name is Blade, yeah. Blade, um, Blade Icewood in the group, you know what I'm saying? Um, talk about him and 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 his importance to the street lords, you know, that seemed to be like a very big loss. Um, at the time when he was, you know, when he uh, passed, uh, let's touch man, on his you life. Know, like, hey, that's my man. Like, like to see his son today. Like, we got kids. Our kids like the same age. So to see his son growing up, and then he looked just like his dad. It's, it's hard to know my friend died over nothing. You know what I'm saying? Like, to be honest, he really died over like some jealous type shit. Like, not he didn't have anything to do with what happened to. Him another individual who got killed and then they wind up a retaliation, they wind up shooting him. Right. First time he got shot like seven times with a K, he lived and then he got end up later getting killed. Like I literally talked to Blade the night before he died. I was in jail, I was in federal prison and I got a cell phone in jail, so we kicking it. He had did this his last album called Blood, Sweat and Tears. And he was putting it on a iPod for for me and his brother because we was in the feds together. And uh, we just joking and talking about like, he can't get no pussy and yeah. I'm like you. And damn. it was like, damn, like, no, brother, you ain't like me. I'm in jail, you out there sucking pussy like a motherfucker. <laughs> yeah, in the free he world, like a, you mean? He like a silly motherfucker, man. Yeah. So we talking and he like, man, I love you, man. I'm telling you, man, when you get out, man, it's gonna be on. And then the next day I get a call on the cell phone. The girl like, man, Blade just got killed, Blade. I'm like, no, stupid. He got shot. 
back in September, he's straight. I just hung up with him. Yeah. She's like, no, he got killed right now. And then my line click on the cell phone. It's my good, it's my girl cousin and my child mother, they screaming to the top of their lungs, like, he got killed, he dead. Like, to be honest, man, every time I be sitting down doing interviews and talking about that shit, it damn near be having to hold myself together to yeah. know my friend died over some bullshit. Oh, like, bullshit, bro. Like, and that shit hurt. Like, and now when I see his brother, that shit hurt. And now you fast forward and you see, you know, Young Dolph get gunned down. You see, you know, um, Slim 400 get done. You should see a lot of these artists getting gunned down. Do you feel like rap in general brings that kind of negative attention on? Because it seems like without rap, a lot of these kids, I feel like, would still be here. Like, it almost seems like the attention of rap and the, the, the interviews and the back and forths online, I don't know if it if it makes it worse or not, but from our vantage point, it's starting to feel like that. It's like, damn. I ain't gonna blame it on rap at all. You know what I'm saying? Like, that would be like blaming it on a movie. You know what I'm saying? Jealousy in the black community is at a super all time high. And it's at a real big high for successful people. You know what I'm saying? So the more successful you are, the more people that show peers or your friends a lot of them become jealous based on what you have because you regular to them. Right. You regular to your peers. And then once you be obtaining all this money, you're not regular to the rest of the people in the world. So some people don't really like that. You know what I'm saying? Like everybody ain't happy for you. Everybody ain't rooting for you. What I will say is the power of the tongue is powerful. I believe what you say come true. Blade rapped about death, getting shot. Tupac rapped about death. Biggie rapped about death. And they all died senseless deaths when you think about it. I'm a, I'm not a, I don't know Young Dolph music like that, but I like some of his records. So I don't know if he rapped about death, but I know as people, a lot of people jealous of Young Dolph. Young, black, rich, a millionaire, you can do whatever you want. Everybody ain't happy for you. So to me, as a businessman, we got to be mindful of that when we getting this money. Like, we gotta protect ourselves because you're gonna be older way longer than you're gonna be younger. So you gotta prepare for the long haul. Meaning like sometimes you might gotta stay away from Ray Ray and JoJo and some of these people that's less fortunate because really you a opportunity for them. Um, I ain't gonna blame it on rap, man. You know, it's evil people in the world. Amen. Uh, it ain't got nothing to do with rap. Now, um, when you have a lifestyle, because I feel like a lot of young cats going to, to music because they see this lifestyle. Now, when you already have the lifestyle that these other people are trying to obtain, what makes you want to do music? What what is what is the motivation? Man, I like music, man. I, I listen to all different type of music, from Afro beats to reggae, man, R&B, um, techno, house music. I just genuinely like music. For the next person, I can't say why they like music. Like, I grew up on music. I grew up listening to Two Live Crew, Fat Boys, Curtis Blow. I mean, I grew up in the heart of hip hop and I probably, it was a record store at my, the corner of my house where I done bought everybody tape at some point in time or CD, before it was CDs, I was buying tapes and uh, just in the music. So I am I like music, all kinds. So. Tell me about your, the, your, your early song days, your first few bars where you just was like, yeah, I got this rap shit. Like what was those bars when you just knew that you had it? I ain't gonna say I knew I had it. I'd be lying to you. <laughs> like, man, I go look back on that shit. Some of that shit was trash to me. Like, I, <laughs> I go back and listen to some of that old shit. Like, boy, y'all, y'all. We like, were just scaring that. these niggas in the paint. Oh, shit. Yeah, like, man, I remember doing a show. We did, we was on a show with Cash Money. And uh, we did it at the atrium in Atlanta. And uh, 
we supposed to go on before cash money, but the uh, the host kept saying, "All right, up next, we bringing out cash money, man. We bringing out cash money." And then it was like, "Oh man, we got one last group. We got the Street Lords," and the crowd just went nuts, like, "Ooh, boo!" They was going crazy. They done the storm shit out of everything. It was like, damn, I was under discouraged that day. That might have been the worst time. But then we started rapping. They kind of got into it, but. They did not want to hear what the fuck we was talking about, man. I ain't gonna tell you no lie. So it took just keep grinding for people to just fuck with us. So it wasn't no, we just popped up and they were like, oh, we good. We have some songs that I'd be embarrassed to play. <laughs> <laughs> now, tell us about a story where you was like, where you meet certain individuals because in this in this industry you're gonna come into contact with a lot of different people and you have certain perceptions before you meet them and then you have a different one after you meet them can you talk about like who you thought was uh, a situation where you thought an entertainer might be one way and then he was another man all the entertainers that i've been around they was cool like too sure it was cool uh das when I was around Daz, he was super cool. And then I thought he was like super talented because he did the beat in like 10 minutes. Like he just went in there like do do do. He did the beat for you? Yeah, he did the beat oh, on, on the Street Lord record. Oh, I want some pussy tonight. He did two, two, he, he produced two songs on that. So You said the cut was called I Want Some Pussy Tonight? Yeah, that was the song called. <laughs> That's tomorrow, <laughs> nigga. I need that tonight. <laughs> so uh Daz was super dope. And be legit, he was be legit was hood, like he was real, like he in the hood with us, he was, I fuck with them, you know what I'm saying, they was good people, like, Be legit was coming in the hood on a regular, like, you know what I'm saying, I fuck with Be So, That's I ain't cool. really been around no flaky people where it was like, oh, he's some bullshit. Yeah, this like, some bullshit. You know what I'm saying? Like, I've had all good encounters, I ain't gonna, it ain't nobody for me to blast, like, oh, he was a piece of shit. <laughs> right. But, um, be legit, definitely. He was a stand up guy. He repped the hood. He was there. Now, I got to ask you this, man. Um, just going again through the research, you know, shout out Big D again. Um, you got indicted on marijuana? Yeah, man. We man, had like, I know you sitting there like, this some booze. <laughs> All right, man, let For the peace? Like, come on, man. Like, now you could damn near start a dispensary at man, this point. Man, that part is so insulting to me. The only felony I got, the only time I've been in trouble is for marijuana. So only way, since it's a federal crime, it gotta be expunged by the president. So I can't get the felony removed right now. Damn, that's crazy. Other than that, I mean, I got in trouble one time, I beat up somebody. Yeah. Not no serious shit, but. Yeah. But yeah, do you look at that shit like, man, come on, man, it's some bullshit. Now, you, now we can sell this shit legally. Now, now if you were able to, let's just say you was back in the day, y'all was able to legally sell the marijuana however through the dispensaries how much money do you think you'd be sitting on right now like if you was able to just to keep that shit going dispensary yeah, man, all legal it's, it's man i can't say you gotta think like they said we made 40 million dollars in a 10 month span so shit. so from 95 to so shit. <laughs> <laughs> so a I black mean, bill gates <laughs> and they would just been handing out like, <laughs> you want some green <laughs> i mean we made a lot of money, man, selling marijuana. And um, we looked at it like, I looked at it like, oh, this is a smart way to do it. You know what I'm saying? You get caught some marijuana, you get a slap on the wrist, it ain't a big deal because I had opportunity to sell a bunch of cocaine and heroin and other products, but I just ain't think it was worth the risk if it went left. Uh, 40 million, what, do you ever, so is it like, do you ever just be like, nah, that's, that's that can't be a, that can't be a, that can't be a correct, accurate, or is that accurate? Man, I think it's closer to, we probably made a little more than Oh, shit. <laughs> like, I think it's but, very accurate as a team. You know what I'm saying? I ain't saying that I made $40 million. So I ain't lying to you, you know what I'm saying? But I made millions of dollars at a very young age. But it was a group, it was a group of us. So somebody, I call it, the, we call it the boat. When the boat go, go out, you might be on the boat, you might be getting three, four hundred pounds. He might be getting six. I might be getting a thousand. He getting two hundred, but it's a, 
a collective group of us. And it's like me and my cousin, we in kind of charge, so we getting a lot of the shit. And you say you was touching as much paper as a very young age. How do you not just be just be completely out your mind? Because I'm trying to fathom a million dollars right now <laughs> in my thirties. So I, I know if I'd have had a million dollars, if I had a mil, if I had, if I was a hundred thousand at nineteen, <laughs> nigga, I'd have just probably had an AK on my back, like 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 a Ninja Turtle. But <laughs> I'll be honest with you, man, we was kind of out of our minds, like so. It ain't uh. Man, that's why I think all oh, you see all these young rappers and going crazy and doing all that shit. They too young with too much power. Like, because yeah. we got that kind of money, you got power. Like, so you got all the choice with all the pretty girls. You got all the choice. People gonna listen to you. Whatever you say gonna be funny. People gonna crack, laugh at all the jokes you say, because you got the money. So having money like that is the gift and the curse. And it's probably why we ain't the biggest rap group of our times because when we was offering them deals to us, we was already having millions of dollars. So they come, Universal offered us like a million dollar deal. And we're like, man, that ain't nobody. And I remember I had shot this movie called Envy and they offered like $2 million before I had finished shooting it. I'm like, man, that ain't no money. When I finish shooting the movie, they are gonna give me 10. But by the time we finish shooting the movie, Damn near indicted and shit all fucked up and I still ain't made a dime off the movie and I spent two million dollars making a fucking movie. Shit. And we had Lisa Ray in the movie, Ray J, uh, Chico DeBarge, the rapper A Z. What movie is this again? It's called Envy. I did that shit. Damn, I, hold on, I, I, I seen a, that movie. Hold on, that was uh I seen it on like it's on Netflix or I mean, it might have been on uh you could pull it up on YouTube, yeah, yeah. but I was really, the way the guy who handled it. Like, I don't want to bad my from a drag him through the mud and he just did the best he could or with what he had or what he knew, you know what I'm saying? But I spent two million on that motherfucker, you know what I'm saying? So shit. shit. And I was listen, this this all factual shit. shit. Ask anybody. Before Eminem shot eight mile, yeah. I was the first nigga in Detroit shooting movies. I'm talking about big okay. boy shit. Like, Damn. I, yeah, because I was gonna say even the movie you have now don't look like no little boy shit. Like Oh, yeah, you, yeah, yeah, yeah. Detroit rappers be having some good quality movies, man. I, I ain't gonna lie, bro. Yeah, <laughs> like Ice for Vezo shit was pretty icy. I was like, man, y'all niggas be having some nice little, you know. Yeah, like, I, I fuck with Vezo. I, like the Detroit uh, rap culture, I fuck with everybody. Like Sada, my guy, Payroll, my guy, Babyface Murray, my guy. I got records with all those guys. About to be, come out shortly. You know what I'm saying? I even play some of the records for you before I get out of here tonight. Yeah. Let y'all hear what's That's hard. to come. That's hard. But. Man, those are those are great individuals, man. They they got work ethic, you know what I'm saying? They done grinded, they've carried the Detroit uh rap legacy even further, you know what I'm saying? Like right now, Detroit kind of doing their thing on the hip hop scene, you know. So So I wanna ask you this, I gotta ask you this, because you're from Detroit, you know, and BMF seems to get all of the shine when it comes to, you know, the hustlers out of Detroit selling, you know, be flashy and all that, but it sounds like Y'all were kind of there before them, you know, and y'all kind of laid the foundation. Um, when when did they come into the picture in your in your mind? And then, like, um, being honest, do you think that y'all had more in the game in Detroit than they did while doing y'all run? You know, y'all run versus I they. Think, run. Man, shout out to Meech and T and all the BMF. I know a lot of those guys. You know what I'm saying? So there's yeah. no knock or disrespect on them, but I think they probably have a more broader popularity where they, that's made them popular. Like, oh, they popular in Atlanta, they popular in St. Louis. But uh, if you want to be actual and factual, yeah. if you talk that Detroit shit, uh, even close. be like, man, motherfucker want to be a lord, a street lord. Like, you like you will hear that. Like, and I ain't just saying it, it's, it's real. Like, you can yeah. go do a survey, you're gonna hear the popular people now say who they looked up to. It right. ain't no knock on them. I think BMF is cool people, you know what I'm saying? I, I rock with Tony, you know what I'm saying? I, I rock with a lot of them, but we was doing our thing. Not even close. 
So everybody wanna be a lure. Like they became more popular after we got invited. So what, definitely became more popular. So do you think that's just because they branched out and went to different cities and kind of was more uh, was flamboyant in different cities versus y'all kind of staying in Detroit? For sure. I think that got a lot to do with it. You know what I'm saying? Because it, it make it seem bigger, even though we don't necessarily know how big it was other than what the news say and they, we know they lie. You know what I'm saying? Like, if, Would you have... Um moved around to would you have like let's say if you had that opportunity to take the brand and move it the street lord brand you think you if you could have did it differently you would have moved and took it to different parts of the uh, i mean i States? sold drugs other places like, i sold drugs in virginia i sold drugs other places too like i ain't get caught in those places but i took weed other places i sent weed other places but i wasn't never trying to be popular for selling drugs to be honest like it's just like shit. I always started trying to start a business and create an extra strategy. Like I was doing clothes. I went to Hong Kong and China back then. I did I did like four million in sales at the Magic Show selling clothes back then. You know what I'm saying? Like I was shooting movies back then. So I always been looking for a way out. It never was like, oh, I want to just be this big drug kingpin. That wasn't it for me. You know what I'm saying? I can't say for the rest of us that was rocking, but I. Everything I had going on was like shit. I gotta get the fuck out of this shit because this shit can come to an end any day. And, you know, man, I always believed in leaving something to my kids. Like my kids is important, and I think each generation should get better. You know what I'm saying? Like my kids shouldn't have to go through what I went through. They kids shouldn't have to go through what they went through. Each generation should get better. No, that's I'm, that's interesting that you say your kids because. You know, you grow up with such a such infamy behind what you built, and then your kids want a piece of that, and it's hard to say no. You can't. I don't want you to be that, or I don't want you to move like that. I want you to do the exact opposite. How do you combat that as a parent? Man, I was blessed, blessed, blessed. And at the time, I probably look at it like that because I got daughters. You know what I'm saying? So oh, daughters so is yeah. less likely. <laughs> <laughs> to run to the streets, you know what I'm saying? So my oldest daughter, she graduated from Michigan State. My next daughter, she is senior at Michigan State. I got a daughter at Stanford, you know what I'm saying? I got two little ones, you know what I'm saying, man? That's eight and nine, so I was blessed. I couldn't imagine having a 20-year-old son right now in this day and age, because he might be running around there trying to act like a goddamn fool trying to be me. I got little brothers that's try to emulate me, you know what I'm saying, or be me. I got a little brother that call himself my exact same name to try to be me and all type of stuff. So I think the influence that we had was not a good one, you know what I'm saying? Some of the shit I ain't proud of, to be honest. Like, ain't, that ain't where I'm at today. Like that happened in my life and then, but, that don't define me, you know what I'm saying? Like, I got so much more I'm trying to do and accomplish where that little phase. drug deal phase, right. hustling phase, like that was <clears throat> gonna be a small part in the story, you know what I'm saying? Like, all right, yeah, we did that. Now we moved on, you know what I'm saying? We trying to build a legacy. So at, at what point did you, was at what point did you say, man, I gotta pick this camera up and, and start getting on these movies? Cause uh, like you say, you got some impressive work out there. Um, and we're gonna touch on it, so. <clears throat> um, man, really, this is what got me in the movies, man. Shout out my man, Calvin. We was at Too Short Studio, man. This was before Jazzy Faye ever had a, a big hit record. It was before Lil John was popping. We all in the studio at Too Short Studios, and Calvin was trying to tell uh, Too Short to do a pimp record with Bruce Bruce as the uh, actor. And uh, he was trying to get too short to put up like 250000 at the time. And I'm just sitting there, I'm in, I'm in the room. I'm over here and I'm like, damn, that's all it costs to shoot a movie. Shit, oh, that's I got what you was thinking? <laughs> that nigga has I got 250000 like, I got shit, that right you know, now. I'm doing that as soon as I get back. You know, So that's kind of what inspired me. But that's crazy. I just kind of looked at it like movies last like 30 years. Like somebody's still getting a check for Scarface. Somebody still getting a check for good time. Yeah. So I was like, shit, I gotta get in on that. I gotta 
I need the type of assets that's going to be producing. That's fire, bro. So, did, so, so what role did you play in it? Did you pick up the camera? You was you did you fund it? Did you like hold the boom? Like what what all did you do when you created man, your first movie? And what was your first movie? I, man, on Envy, this first movie. So I yeah, mean, right out the gate, you had Ray J in the movie. Man, listen. The hey. movie was only supposed to cost two hundred fifty thousand. That's why I say my guy. He at first it was me and my cousin. We was gonna be the the like lead characters, and then you know we hustling. We I kind of took acting for granted. Yeah. Like, oh, this shit's work, man. I ain't really got time to be doing this shit 10 hours a day. I'm still hustling, getting money. So we wound up getting AZ and Ray J to play it. Um, I, I come to the guy, I got this idea. I want to do this movie called Envy about two cousins hustling and one getting jealous. You know what I'm saying? And they have a big fallout. So I'm like, how much it costs to write a strip? He was like, about 5500 and we was just meeting at a, a um, it was like a hair show event. Yeah. They had did an interview on me, definitely like we do doing right now. And it's like, he like, I can shoot a movie. And he told me it's going to be 5000 I already meet me tomorrow. I ain't getting no paperwork or nothing. Reaching my pocket the next day, doing five bands, like, boom. I told him what I wanted to be about. A couple weeks later, they came with a script. Oh, shit. Like, uh, he like, what actors you want? I'm like, I could get Lisa Ray. Like, yeah, I want her. He's like, all right, she gonna be thirty thousand. Like, all right, bet. Like, all right, get her. So they come to me. I wanted the girl Maya Campbell because I thought she was a fine motherfucker. So right. damn, they're really just luster. Like, right, right, right. Give me Maya Campbell, and they come to me like, man, we could get Megan Good. This before Megan Good had really popped. It's like right after Eve's Bayou. Right, right, right. And I'm like, no, nah, man, fuck that. But at the time, then when she wanted twenty thousand, like, no, nah, fuck that. Give me the girl from in the house, cause I was just lusting over yeah, her yeah. and shit. And, uh, we got her, and uh, no knock on my camera. Like, I think she was a super dope actress. You know what I mean? And I feel bad that she go through her bipolar issues, and I've seen all type of negative things on the internet. But when I seen her in person, she didn't look like. Like what she be looking like on like how she be looking on TV. You got catfish. So, but there's no knock on her because on camera, like she's a pretty lady. She's yeah. super dope. You know what I'm saying? She just and he said like he was disappointed when she pulled up. Like man, I ain't. I don't want to just be turning like a negative thing. Like nah, I feel you. negative nah, about nah, hey, we can't. Hey, I, beautiful queen. Beautiful. Yeah, you know she was. It just yeah. I, I feel you. You know I what I'm saying? Understand. But understand. she was a super dope actress. Like man, when she like, got the job, when she clicked in the character, yeah, is it? Man, she was on her shit. Like she was super dope. You know what I'm saying? So she was super talented. She could sing. She actually, I took her to the studio with me when we did the song with Benny Siegel on Freeway. Like you know, yeah. she was cool people. So it was all love. Like she was a good person. But I feel bad when I see the. I'm trying to figure like, out how you ran up two M's though. Like, okay, I get the the actors was like that. That all sounded like that's man, about a hundred. Everything, nigga, over, two M's. Listen, everything was going over budget. We using all union people. The guy ain't know what he was doing. We paying people who not even. I, I honestly say, I honestly want to be like, because when it sounded like what was happening was a fan be like, uh, yeah, thirty thousand. <laughs> yeah, we yeah, we'll get a good thirty thousand. Yeah, because it's like, man, this is the thing. This is why I don't, I'd like to try to get rid of the stigma. People think when you're a drug dealer, they think you're stupid. And they try to take advantage of you because they feel like your money is come easy. But it don't really come easy. So you have a lot of people taking advantage of the situation. And I would definitely say uh, some of those gentlemen took advantage of the situation. Uh, making that particular movie. Now, why, would, why would somebody want to play with a street lord like that? Like that sounds like some risky shit to even try to do. You know what I'm saying? I mean I know it can I know it can go way left if you want it to go way left. I'm not even gonna ask you about that, but I'm just saying why would somebody even want to try that? Like Man, greed. People don't know, man. Greed, damn near everything, greed get people killed. You know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. Like it ain't just the whole Thing or ran off on the plug or all of that. All that shit is really greed. Yep. So greed is a bad motherfucker. Like shit, that shit get a lot of people. So, so what? Up. What is the approach now when we go to make a film? Like, what is the what is 
What are some of the things that are stringent and, and contingent upon, and they have to be done? And what when you get ready to make a film now? Like I'm, I'm, I'm way more hands on. Yeah. You know what I'm saying? Because at the time, I did envy. You know, I'm a drug dealer. I'm getting a bunch of money, but I don't want my drug dealing to get this movie fucked up or wow. make it where it can't come out. So I'm, I'm a little less hands on than I should have been. Is that what happened? You said that the drug dealer made it where that movie couldn't come out, or? No, the movie came out, yeah. it was just the guy who handled it really just don't like his business right. acting, you know what I'm saying? It's like you. the way he handled it is not the way I would have handled it. But, but you I aim high though. Him, yeah. You know what I'm saying? It's just more like he did the best he could with what he knew, I guess. You know yeah. what I'm saying? I can't. That's a question for him. You know what I'm saying? Like I can't say why it didn't or why he didn't do it this way. He just did the best he could. You know what I'm saying? So this is a question I just got for you, just maybe philosophically, right? I was again, I was doing research, and it was a guy was saying he knew you when you was young. You was always a hustler. Like you always, it didn't matter what it was, nigga. You was always getting to it, going getting to the money, and just hearing your story, right? It always seems like it doesn't matter what the fuck you aim high. You don't think small. You know what I'm saying? For There's a lot of people that I would say that don't get very far in this world because either they think too small or they don't think they can do it. What didn't you click to where you like, nigga, I can, nigga, you know what I mean? I can get Ray J in the movie. Like, who, who the fuck thinks like, who the fuck thinks I'm going to go get Lisa Ray on my first movie? You know what I mean? Like, I mean, I believe in, in me. Like, if I, if I had to bet on somebody, I'm going to bet on me. I'll bet the house on me. And then I always think big, like shit. Bill Gates ain't no different than me. He put his pants on one leg, one leg at a time. You know what I'm saying? That's it. Like, is that something you just had in you? Is that, is that something that you just kind of like it clicked yeah, in you? Like my grandmother, man, she always told me I could do anything. You know what I'm saying? I believe, and I believed it. And then my mother told me, "Ain't no two days the same. You can be broke today and rich tomorrow." So that's always been my motto. Like, granted. Things ain't the way I want them to be, but shit, tomorrow, all this shit can change. That's what that's live. Like, all this shit can change tomorrow. Good and bad. So you are, like, to me, you gotta be a humble person because you can be rich today and broke tomorrow. Like, I've been rich, I've been poor. I've been rich, I've been poor. I'm trying to figure it out right now. But I believe I'm gonna figure it out where I'm gonna make hundreds of millions of dollars. Like, granted, it ain't happened today, but it's on the way. You know what I'm saying? Like, I know it's on the way. Straight up. Like, I, I believe that. So, um, before we get off the movie topic, you got a movie out right now called One More Flip on yeah. Amazon Amazon Prime? Yeah. It's on Amazon right now. It'll be on Tubi in a few weeks. Like, so, but, Tell us who's all in that. Man, One More, one more Flip. Um, it can't. It came out October first. We was like the number one movie on Amazon a couple for a couple months down there. Like we we've been top trending movies on Amazon for since we've been out. Um, I got Sada Baby in the movie, Race the Five Nine, Payroll Giovanni, Mina Monroe, the comedian Jack Pot the Juice, uh, me. You know, it's a lot of up and coming actors in one more flip. Uh, one of the guys played in BMF. Uh, a dope project, man. I mean, it ain't your typical drug dealer movie, like, like it got a message in it. Like, my my goal is to create real movies where people can learn something and take something from it. At the end of the day, you know. So, I want to find and develop new talent, build and keep growing. Like, but one more flip, a dope project, man. What is it? What is a movie that you would like to shoot? Um, if, like, if you had any type of budget, whatever, what kind of film would you like to make? Man, I shoot the Street Lord series. <laughs> if, I had the <laughs> if I had the budget to do yeah. it how I want to do it, yeah, you know the story that everybody know about it. But I, yeah. I'm gonna do it. Yeah, it's you just, should. It's gonna you should. happen. You, you know should. what I'm saying? Hopefully, it happens in the next year or so. But I'm gonna shoot the Lord. And uh, it's gonna be a series, man. It's in the works. I got some stuff going on. It's, it's gonna happen. Uh, I think I'll be able to do it in a manner where people are gonna be like, "Damn, like them boys 
Now, let's say 50 Cent approach you. He's like, yeah, I can, I could, I could, I could get the Lords. I could do that. I could. Do you put, do you put your baby in 50 Cent hands, or do you like, nah, I'm, a, I got it. It's business at the end of the day, so we gotta make the best business decision. Like, if we ain't gonna have no ownership, no say so, then we'll probably tell 50 Cent no. Now, who's gonna play you? That's what I want to know. Who the gonna best play <laughs> street money? <laughs> <laughs> street Lord, I said Street Boy. Street uh, Lord Rook, who gonna play you at? Man, the best actor we can find, man. It's about talent, man. It's not the best. That nigga had grown ass Denzel. Find to play it that's gonna deliver the role. It ain't. Yeah. Man, I'm about building up new people and giving people opportunity that's never had opportunity to see them grow right. and build. So I don't know. Whoever come in to audition and nail that shit. That's the most believable. Yeah. Like, it ain't no, it's nothing personal with me. It's all business. Like, so, because we want to create a classic project where at the end of the day, people be like, man, that shit was good as hell. Not, oh, they got him in it and it just, <laughs> it ain't believable. So we want to create quality over quantity. So now I got to put you on the spot. You got to give me the top three hood movies of all time. Pay in full. Yeah, I'm, I'm, you, I'm with you on that one. Belly gonna be on the list. Yeah. That's true. One more flip gonna be on the list. <laughs> <laughs> there we go. There we go. One more flip. <laughs> one more flip gonna be on the list, man. Um, yeah. If you talking about independent hood movies, like Yeah, man. I That's think it. we I think we I think we up there. Up there. Uh, we I ain't just I'm, I'm, I'm not just saying it because I'm it's gonna mine. go I'm gonna go purchase it tonight, man. I'm gonna go watch that. I ain't saying it because it's mine. I bet anybody you can line up my story against anybody's story, and I bet you people gonna be like, "That's a damn good movie." You know what I'm saying? It ain't no. I'm not being arrogant about it, but I'm definitely confident in the right. quality of the product that we put out for sure. So. How how proud are you, man? Um, coming from where you come from, to see you know you got your side of babies, Ice Work Vessels hot now, the Detroit Sound, Forty Two Doug. You know, um, you know, y'all are still out, BMF movies out. Like Detroit, the sound is big. Like, how proud are you to just see Detroit like really kind of running shit? You know what I'm saying? As far as musically in the in the game right now. Man, it's really like super dope, man. Shout out Fo2 Doug and all that that, that they doing. Shout out Sada, shout out Payroll Vez. Uh I forget to mention 4 2 Doug sometimes, but you know, I I know his dad. Shout out to those. Sure, Big Sean. Big, I forgot about Sean, him. Like, it's a lot of y'all, bro. T Grizzly. T Shout Grizzly. Out T Grizzly. Like, they are all of the guys that I've known and met, they're super dope. Like, I, granted, it's so many Detroit artists right now. I don't know them all. But I do know a truckload of them. I know a ton of them. Like, it's dope to just see them carry on the legacy. You know what I'm saying? And keep it going. Now, did. The, the progression of music from when you did it to where it is right now, did you see it going that way? Or did some of the changes uh, surprise you? Or did you see it going a certain way? How, how was that like when you, when you, as you, as you grew into music and seen it change? Man, I don't really see no change. Like it's, it's, it's been a lot of Detroit rappers that's been doing their thing, but now it's kind of like the rest of the world just getting hit, you know what I'm saying? But that sound been there, like like we we been doing it. Like it's been popularized because some other popular rappers like, oh, this the shit. But it's been there. Like it's no different. Y'all niggas can't there. be making love to that though. <laughs> Y'all niggas can't be making love to that type of music though. Like what? what like you know what I'm saying? <laughs> <laughs> the beat too. You know what I'm saying? It's like too crazy. Like what do y'all? What what happened to like the rapper like with a uh, smooth R and B and then you got the the nigga jump on and with the rap shit like it don't seem like I don't never see none of that from from Detroit. It's like all one type Man, way. You I, know? I can be honestly, it's there. Like, I'm sure if you go scream through a T Grizzly album, he got a song about the girl. I want right to hear here. a Detroit love song, man. I want. <laughs> I, I'll play, I want to hear it. I'll, I'll, play you, I'll play you when, uh, we, when, we, get, when we get off here. Because like. I was going to say, Detroit player, like y'all know from the player shit, the, you know, the porn shit. Y'all got the porn stars. That's what all the porn came from that motherfucker, right? What, what porn stars? When did, when, when did Detroit they had all them uh, 
the cakeys and the body and all them when they all the body the, is from yeah, yeah, all know, them, yeah, them little vintage porn. Yeah, body. yeah. Y'all had all the porn stuff. <laughs> <And> you, <laughs> you shot a porn, didn't you? No. Okay, 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 okay. So if somebody hit you, it was like, <laughs> hey, man. But, man, it's dope to just see the movement and see it growing in the direction it's growing because it's making a lot of black young men wealthy so, where they're able to take care of their families and grow and be able to leave something to their children. And keep keep it going. So I think it's super dope. Do you have any literature out? You mean like a book? Yeah. I wrote a book when I was in jail, man. And I've been thinking about releasing it, but it's just I got so much on my plate that I'm trying to do. I have to narrow some of the things down. Maybe that's something that I can do later in the future. Uh, you know, your story is very interesting. And I feel like you, I saw you, I didn't, when I went on your page, I didn't see no book, but I just knew it was a book somewhere. No, I ain't, like, I wrote one in jail, like, yeah, I wrote, my last 90 days, I wrote a book, and it's like, I need to just put it out, but I haven't got around to it. When, I got, when, when you got out, and you knew you had to, you knew things had to change your life, and, you know, you had to do something, what were some of the first steps you made to make a transition into what your life was going to be today? Um... Man, when I got out, man, it was like the recession. Everybody talking about it's the recession. And I'm like, damn, what the fuck you gonna do? Like, I'm just trying to figure it out. So I ain't really know what I was gonna do, but I knew I wasn't finna go back to Arizona and get no more bottles. So it was just like, I gotta figure it out, man. I ain't gonna even lie to you, man. I was in the halfway house, and this was like a moment. I was struggling like a motherfucker. I was like, yeah, my daughter went on the Game Boy, and, uh, I had the money for it, but I really couldn't afford that motherfucker. So I remember when I went, um, when I got out the halfway house, I came home through the drug program. So every Wednesday we had a meeting, and uh, Mr. Nolan was the guy who ran the meeting. He, I come in, I probably looked sad because I was really struggling this day. And he was like, "What's wrong, Reed?" I'm like, "Man, Mr. Nolan, I'm struggling today. Man, I damn near might want to go sell some drugs because." I went to jail rich, you know what I'm saying? And I'm coming home and I got to figure out about the game boy, you know what I'm saying? Because when you go to jail, people steal money, lose shit. It just be a plethora of things that go left, you know what I'm saying? Because it'd be a lot of people around who never had money. So you can't leave them with no money they never had. So that, because they're going to fuck it up. So just all type of shit happened. Throughout that time period, I was gone, and uh, it wasn't great. So yeah, I was struggling, and then I just believed in myself, man. Really, that's what kept me going, like shit. But I did have days where I was questioning myself, like, man, you might need to get back to selling drugs. You was good at it. Where I used to have to question myself, like, man, maybe you just meant to be a drug dealer. I was like, no, nah, man, just keep going, and then like. My cousin came home, he was back getting to it, like, come on, cuz, nigga, come on, one, one more time, man, this gonna just be for us. I was like, no, I kind of like toughed it out, and uh, things started to drastically change at a slower pace, and then I was doing great, and then my cousin got 20 years, you know what I'm saying, where, Shit. where it's like, damn, like, but do you Good think thing you have faith? You know what I'm saying? Because I could have been right there with him. Yeah. You ever be just think now, like I could set up a dispensary and and get to it, you know, legally or? Man, I don't trust the government, man. Be honest with you, like <laughs> I ain't trying to get a dispensary because I don't want them to think I'm backed up to my old tricks, and then they come out the woodwork like, oh, this is illegal federally, so we're gonna lock you back up because you've got a criminal history of selling marijuana and. So on and so forth. So I had a meeting with um he used to be the state state rep, his name was Isaac, about he was gonna help me get the dispensary. They got a program if you had a medical mar a, a, a marijuana case that you can get a medical marijuana license. But he died during COVID. So I really haven't hey. uh been able to get back on it like that. But yeah, it's not like he's, so it's, it's like it's stick stick to yeah, you got the movies though. So Yeah, so movies I ain't got paid off of movies, but I just believe it's gonna work. You know what I'm saying? I believe in it. Right. And I'm 
grinding. Like, I got four movies done right now, done in the can. I'm about to, this year coming up, I'm gonna be dropping a lot of them. So I know we finna start getting checks. That's what's up. Gonna get checks for one more flip. Uh, I'm anxious to see how, how it's done. That's what's up. And uh, we gonna just keep building, you know what I'm saying? Don't nobody pop on the first time. Yeah. So it's like being it for the long haul. Like, People who pop on the first time normally don't be around too long. Straight, straight up, straight yeah, up. So we we gonna build something great. That's the motto. We building something great. So um, you know, let's talk about your music. You know, um, you do have an album out right now, Life After the Feds. But you told me that's that's old. So let's talk about what we got coming up. You know, yeah, I got the one more flip soundtrack coming up, and it's really like my album. Like all the music that you hear throughout the movie, one more flip. It's all my music, except two songs in there. Thought I got two songs in there that was his record, but every other song that's played throughout that uh, movie is all mine. So I got a lot of music coming out. Like I said, I got Sada, Payroll, Babyface, uh, and the rest is just all me. At first, I was gonna do it all me, and. Um, just keep building, you know what I'm saying? Like, if I keep putting it together, nice body of work, people will catch up. Like, everything don't happen in the first go round. So, just keep building. Do you ever feel like you in, uh, have to keep up with the younger generation? Hell no. <laughs> Hell no. <laughs> that is, actually, I mean, the younger generation, they do a lot of foolish stuff because they, they don't do. have the wisdom that I probably have today where I'm able to look back and be like, man, you blew a lot of money. So today, I ain't finna go buy no motherfucking $2,500 pair of fucking pants. Like, uh, for what? Like, that ain't my style, you know what I'm saying? But today, that's like, that's cool, you know what I mean? So I look at it from a, a business standpoint, like this buying more assets than more than liabilities, you know what I'm saying? So. Do, you think, do you think back then when you had it, do you think you would have blew 2,500 on some pants? Fuck yeah, I was making <laughs> millions. I was making millions of dollars. But today, looking at it, I wish I had an OG to tell me, hey man, you're gonna be older way longer than you're gonna be younger. You might need to put a little more of that up where you could be Secure for the long haul. Like I don't, I'm in a good position today. You know what I'm saying? Like it's 25 years later, and I still live good. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of niggas 25 years later can't say they doing what the fuck I'm doing and fuck living how I'm living. So it's like 25 years, 25 years later, all my boss talk still hold true. You know what I'm saying? It's a lot of niggas ain't no more bosses. They run around like I used to be this, or I used to be that. So I'm, I'm blessed. You know what I'm saying? Like. Do you ever be feeling like uh, you should invest in some of this shit like like Amazon, like uh, Bitcoin or? I made a lot of money off Bitcoin, man. I, oh, I, I got in Bitcoin when it was like six hundred dollars. So I. Oh well, shit! This is. What? Um, but listen, this was the blessing about going to jail. Going to jail, I learned about the stock market. Man, I was in jail. I wasn't trying to get no connects. I wasn't trying to do meet no new plugs, none of that shit. I wasn't trying to learn Spanish to talk to the Mexicans. I was in that bitch like, man, I'm gonna read these books. I'm gonna learn how to do this real estate. I was doing real estate, but I was like, I'm gonna learn the stock market. So when I came home, I started day trading, trading the stock market. And then one of my guys, I was like, man, I'm about to put all this money in to cover calls. It's like a stock market strategy where you earn income. And he was like, man, fuck that shit. Man, you need to buy some Bitcoin. And it's like, all right. And uh, Bitcoin was like $600 when I first got in. So I bought all these Bitcoin. And then Bitcoin did a stock split to Bitcoin Cash. Mm -hmm. And I woke up when the shit had split. I had like an extra half a million dollars. I was like, damn, you know what I'm saying? So I traded in some of my Bitcoin Cash. And then I just started buying the shit. And then I was down there, I made a bunch of money. But then Bitcoin down there started going down, so I was stressing out. And uh, 
one day I just like, man, fuck that Bitcoin shit. You can't keep looking at that shit. Right. It'd be the stress just damn self out. And then I looked at my Bitcoin account. Somebody like, man, Bitcoin at 40,000. I'm like, yeah, you got there. I looked at the account like, oh, okay. Life is better than I thought, you know what I'm saying? Like, yeah, heck, that, uh, man, that's my, an awesome story, bro. I ain't gonna lie to you. I, be, I, I have a homeboy who, uh, he spent 20 Bitcoins on a fake ID. Uh, yeah. He had 20 of them hoes to spend them on a fake ID. <laughs> hey, look, <laughs> man, my guy who turned me on to Bitcoin, I gave him 10 Bitcoin. Uh, <laughs> I gave him 10 Bitcoin. There's no lie, no exaggeration. 10 Bitcoins for turning me on. I have made so much. I gave him 10 Bitcoin. So I've been blessed, man. Like, I really been blessed. Like, granted, I have had tragedies in my life. My mom died while I was out on bond. Um, my friend got killed. I was locked up. You know, everything don't be going the way I wanted to go. But, you know, it ain't what it used to be either. You know what I'm saying? I got day to day issues that I deal with that I'm not happy with. But, you know, I'm I'm a work in progress, you know what I'm saying? I'm steadily growing, learning and trying to build. Like that's, that's what it's all about. Man, we like to, you know, for those, you know, that, that that's kinda got the similar story that you have. Just leave them with a little bit of knowledge, you know what I'm saying, before we get out of here, man. Leave them with something that they can put on their brain. <clears throat> it's a lot of, I feel like a lot of young people that, that that's just kind of doing anything, you know what I'm saying, to, to, to get by, you know, doing what they got to do. But, you know, you've man, been there, man. you know, so. One thing I think people need, man, is patience. Like, like patience is like one of the most important things because we as African American black men have a lot of stress on our plate. Like we got a lot of, a lot of stress on our plate where we feel like we gotta get some money. We gotta make something happen fast because we might got our baby mama on our back, somebody on our back, or we might feel like we need to get the girl of our, that we really want. So we gotta go take a chance that be getting us fucked up. Like we take a lot of chances for other people. And then we find out later, after we in a situation, that uh, them same people we was risking it all for won't be there for us in a time of need. Mm -hmm. So I think it's patience, man. Now just keep grinding, building at your pace. Don't let nobody uh, pressure you to do some shit that, that can go wrong. Because everything we do, can go wrong. And then sometimes the stuff we do people with, some people don't hold up. They don't, every, man, every crew, every gang, every conspiracy, when the money was coming, everybody was like, man, I'll never tell, I knew this, I'm a gangster, death before dishonor. They say all that shit. But I mean, you can check every crew. On the BMF crew, it was niggas told, Street lawyers, there was some niggas told. I'm sure some dudes out of Dallas that was getting money mm. where some niggas told. There's always gonna be some people that tell when you're doing wrong. You know what I'm saying? So just have patience and keep grinding. It's coming. Uh, you got any shout outs? Shout out, shout out all my street lawyer fans. Shout out everybody in Dallas. Shout out everybody who fuck with anything that I'm doing. You know what I'm saying? Anybody need it? Some help with anything that I can help with, DM me. Ask Street Lord Rook. I respond to everybody, man. I'm real, I'm regular. You know what I'm saying? All this shit can change tomorrow, so. Hey, man. You know, before we get out of here, I got to tell you, man, you know, this the real D time right here, right? Hey, <laughs> <laughs> uh, man. man. It's all I, love, man. I want to thank you so much for coming. Man, it was a pleasure, man, to hear your story, man. It's legendary for sure. Everything you do, man. We to be active in it and be a part of it and share with the rest of the world man keep going and go be greater and go further man street lord rook you are a real life street star yeah. appreciate street it star. shout out real street stars nigga. Move.